What's up guys, Waldo here. Today I'm gonna to show you a quick tutorial that will explain how to use your phone screen as a controller to move your character left and right. So open up Unity and let's get started. So go ahead and grab your character sprite and drag him onto the middle of the screen. Doesn't really matter the position right now. Um, I put him right in the center right here. Um, then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to create a new button. By creating this new button, it adds it to a canvas already uh, automatically. So go ahead and rename this button left button. Then what you're going to want to do is position this button so that it's only on the left side of the screen. And I do this simply by dragging these corners to 50% and then dragging the corner of this box over to the top right. Then what you want to do is remove the sprite out of this so it's just a plain white box. And then what I like to do is I take, uh, just remove the transparency for the normal color. This makes it a transparent um, button right now. Do the same thing for the highlighted color. And then for the press color, I like to keep this around about 40, per, about 40 alpha. So what this is going to do is that when you actually press down on the button, it's going to create a box, nice transparent white box. Now this is optional, um, just to kind of demonstrate left and right where the left and right buttons are. Um, just make a capital L and change the color to this to white. And you can also make this transparent so it's see-through. And now I'm going to make this nice and big um, so that it can be seen pretty obviously. And then you're going to want to duplicate this button and make a right button. Just go ahead and relabel it right BTN. And then you're also going to want to drag this over to the right side of the screen. This will ensure that it takes up the entire, no matter what device you're on, it's going to fill the right side of the screen. And then go ahead and change that to R so we know that's the right controller. And then we're going to go ahead and test that and just, as you see, if you if you're tapping on the right side of the screen or the left side of the screen, that you get a little highlight effect. I find this to be very nice on mobile devices, but keep in mind this is an optional thing, it's strictly visual at this point. Next, you're going to want to go ahead and create a new C sharp script. Go ahead and label this movement. This is where you're going to write the code for the movement. Go ahead and open this script. Okay. This is where the code for your movement is going to lie. So at first we're going to start with um, our variables. So go ahead and create a new line. I'm right here, variables. And we're going to start with our a public variable, public float for move speed. And let's set that to 300. I set this as public so that you can change it later on. And then we're going to create another public game object called character. This is where our movable character is going to lie. And then we're also going to create a, let's put this to a new line, a private variable for our rigid body for our character. This is so that we can add force to the character, um, moving it left to right. We're also going to create a private float for our screen width. This is how we are able to tell if you're touching the left or right of the screen. 
Then you're going to go down to your start function, and we're going to define we're going to define our screen width, and we're going to set that to screen dot width. This is a built-in function that will calculate the width of the device. And then we're also going to um, set up our and define our character body to equal um, the public game object's character. We're going to do a get component, and we're going to grab the rigid body 2D. This is so we can declare it later in our function. Next, we're going to create a function, a private function called uh, run character. And we're going to have a variable called horizontal input. This is going to be between negative one and one. It's going to be a float. And it's going to tell us whether we're pointing left or right. So then we're going to go ahead and select character body, and we're going to add force. So we will call this function every time um, a key is pressed. So we're going to add force new vector 2, um, and since we want to move them on the x-axis, we're going to define horizontal input times move speed, which we declared in the beginning, times time dot delta time so that we keep it accurate with the frame and we're going to set our y variable to zero since he's only moving left and right on this device feel free to switch the x and y uh, variables if you want to move them up and down instead of left and right Next, we're going to go up to our update function, and we're going to declare an integer i equals zero. We're going to use this for a um, a while loop, so that we can loop over every time a finger is pressed on the screen. So we're going to set it up while i is less than input dot touch count. So every time there's a touch on the screen and then we're going to set up a if input dot get touch i dot position dot x is greater than screen dot width divided by 2 Basically what this is telling us is did is was a finger press on the screen that was on the second half of the screen width. So it was it pressed on the right side of the screen. So if so, we're going to do run our function run character and we're going to set it to 1.0f, which is basically saying that our horizontal input was was right. Similar, if you were to press the right arrow key or right analog stick, it would also render um, a positive float integer. Then right below this, we're going to set up our move left function. So it's very similar, except we're going to do imp if input.getTouchI dot position dot x is less than screen width divided by 2. And in this case, we're going to... set up our run character function to do a negative 1.0 f which is telling us to move left and so we can loop through it we're going to do plus plus i now we're going to just test our build make sure there's no errors there is not 
and we'll switch over to Unity. Now the first thing we want to do is select the main camera over the top left and we want to drag our movement script over to the inspector panel. This adds the script to the camera and then we want to select our character sprite and drag that over to the character spot in the inspector. This assigns the character variable in our script to the specific sprite. So this is the character that we're going to move. And we're also going to then go ahead and select our character and add a rigid body 2D. This allows us to move the object. And since we don't have a floor, let's go ahead and change that gravity scale to zero. So this way it doesn't fall. Um, an added bonus, we can go ahead and add a Polygon Collider 2D. This basically assigns a physics um, barrier for our character. This won't be needed for this tutorial, but we'll add it anyway. And we'll go ahead and test. And as you can see, if we click the right and left panels of the screen, in Unity Editor, the character does not move. The reason for this is because uh, we set up touch control. So if you were to render this script on a uh, mobile device, it would move. But for now, um, just to test it in the editor, what we can do is we can add a small little script here. So we're going to create a um, fixed update function. And we're going to set up a test scenario where we're going to do a if unity editor so this will only apply, this code will only apply to the Unity editor. And we're just going to do a run character. And we're going to do input dot get access horizontal. And now what this is going to do is if you uh, run, the, run the program in Unity editor and you use your arrow keys on your keyboard, or if you have a controller plugged into your computer, um, you'll be able to use, you'll be able to move the character. So let's go ahead and test that. And if we press um, the left and right arrow keys on our device, you can see that the character then moves. So our function works well. And if you click on the main character, we can actually alter the move speed. So if we change it to 150, it actually will notice that the character then um, moves slower. So feel free to change this variable to whatever speed that you desire that works best for your gaming environment. See, obviously if we change it to 600, our character moves a lot faster. So the higher the number, the, the more force is added to the character. The lower the number, um, the slower he moves.